Hello there everybody, this is Brad Dyke, and the bad weather is gone and things are starting to move forward again. And I have some goals and projects, and thanks to some great input from all of you, uh, you've given me some roadmaps some, of some ideas that I can address based on my availability and funds and so on and so on that can help you guys learn more going forward. Now, as I've said in the past, the reason why I do all this stuff is to take what I know and all that money that was spent in my education in the IT industries, and I'm still doing it today, and turn it around. Because there are a lot of young men and women out there who just don't get the opportunity. They're just not being granted those opportunities. So this is a way for me to help them transition from personal IT, playing around, tinkering, and so on, to professional IT, and how really easy it is to transition between the two. So to, as I asked about a month ago, for you guys to give me some ideas of what you're interested in seeing, I got some good feedbacks. So to start off, I'm going to build a transition rig today for my rig three for my mining rigs so that you can see how I transformed a server chassis that I bought in 2002. This is, by the way, the absolute best for you chassis in the industry. Look how open structure it is. I did a, a video on this once before, but I retired it because, you know, I thought maybe I was getting too old. And then lo and behold, I dug it out and I said, you know what, this is just not a good case to ever put away or retire. It just works. You can put anything in this monster, which is great. So my thought is I'm going to use this rig here, which basically has a basic IO module in it and a USB interface, a very good tack control front tap panel here for reset power set and alarm notification sets and so on so this has got a very robust set of cable hookups for almost any class of server or non-server based platform and then of course the space the reinforced structure is just an excellent overall case and i just think in a world of it i think it's very valuable and very good now i'm going to show you what i'm going to put in it so hold on just a minute okay so this is rig three right here it's a simple test rig. It's got two vi video cards in it. It produces a decent or hash amount for what it can do. And, but the cool thing is, I'm using a cycle-based processor motherboard, a Pentium processor, believe it or not. Not a Xeon, not an i3, 5 or 7 or 9, but a genuine Pen Pentium processor with 8 gigs of RAM. And it's crunching and doing what it needs to do as if it was an i5 and everything. But I've got it down by almost 100 watts running it on a 550 two video cards this and this and a 550 and i could deal, still do another card but i need to get this rack back i need this test bench and as you noticed it's a different kind of bench than the previous one i had but i'm also want the space back and to do that and to listen to what you guys are asking for me to do next i decided well this will work out two ways one i'll get more space back for my work and two i'll have another project for you guys to look at and how you take your test design rigs and transition them into an operational rig setup where it will eventually go below this test rig here. This is rig two, which I'll go ahead and turn back on. And I'm gonna take these two chassis, the RLX and the Sunfire out, and that will be the new home for the rack that which I'm building right now. So this will be a little bit lengthy video and it'll be multi-stage, so don't be surprised with that, but I just want to show you this and see how we can get to this. And if you're asking the question, well, Brad, this is all cool stuff, but hey, why are you really moving this stuff like you are? Well, to answer that question, I have basically one answer. And I am working with some people here, uh, Tyler and Nate and a few others, who are working with me to figure out how we can reinvent this Series 1100 uh, Xeon Pi coprocessor and to see what we can do with it because I've got three of them and it's a good experiment they run hot so that means I got to design and implement and, and figure out how I want to do the job of making this work uh, they are no longer supported by Intel they're in a phase out process so it's a perfect example of what we do so well we take the stuff that's out there and we reinvent it into new things so with that being said, I'll begin the process of staging this chassis and getting things going, and then we can get it to the next level. I will see you in a bit. Okay, in this segment, the very first thing I need to do 
is I have to revert, review this chassis as is. And as you can see, you can see the wear and tear of all the stuff I've done with this chassis. And that kind of exa exa exacerbates the nature of how this chassis works. Now, I have available to me for use a standard 2.0 USB output, which is right here. And I use a glue resin to hold it in place. And then I have a stand separate class USB card setup, which is right here, as well as a USB split as if I need to use that. And I'm actually going to use it this time because I have an output for this. So I'll be freeing this cable up to make that available. Um, I have some natures in the cable management I've got to look at, as well as making sure that this bundle, only what I need goes over and the rest is securely put in, right in this area here to keep it in place. Now, also you notice I have air mover here. And the air mover is going to go down into this lower receiver cap here. And I'm not worried about air filtration because the cap lens itself, as you can see here, has air filtration filters right here for general airflow and what we call distribution or even distribution. Uh, that way we don't have odd air flows coming into the left or the right. We want it all to be fairly consistent going through. The other thing that will have to happen as well is I'm going to have to make sure that I've got these guys cleaned up and I got it prepped and then I mount them with their new fan systems at which will help to exit the air out of the system because the power supply doesn't really help you with air exit. It just creates a sense of circulation effect. So we want to make sure the heat from the power supply, the motherboard, and the open channel sections are all in the clear so that we can get things flowing pretty well. So with that being the case, I'll bring in those fans next and see how it's going to look, and I'll show you what that will look like. Okay, so in this part, I made the transition, and what I basically did was I restructured the way this particular chassis is now so that I have air movers in the front which I can still use the full bays if I want to that's not a problem and my air movers are basically running and will sustain running at about 90 as uh, 2900 rpm so they move a lot of good air so the problem with that obviously is I have to have something pseudo equivalent for airflow exit and Instead of using these bigger, uh, the, the full size of these vented pathways, I chose to use a higher RPM 3500 set here, and these will move almost all the air that's here, allowing some force exit on the sides and through the panel sections. And the whole goal of this is to drive the airflow so that the air comes in cool, warm, hot exit. So this is a clean way of doing that. You can also temporarily add independent blowers like this in case you develop a hot zone uh, in the areas of the I.O. bus board. In other words, one of the uh, slots for the PCI side, right, like right here. And that's usually caused, you have to do that sometimes because of the fact that your power supply is causing what's called a heat feedback loop. And it kind of keeps a hot zone inside the chassis. You can use this, of course, to suck that out or assist in sucking that out by mounting it right here and getting that localized air away from other hot processors and allow you to keep the unit pretty cool. So, uh, our goal is to keep it around 68 to 72 degrees Celsius. That's okay and that's normal. It will work for you. Don't freak out too much on that. It can be obviously better and it definitely can be much worse. You want a chassis that can do both. Now this chassis actually has an insulation coating on it, which is the tan coating side of it, and it's been very valuable for non-IT enclosure environments because of the nature of home labs. It's okay if your chassis can take a few extra degrees off of the internal heat and path it through the sides. So that's very good. Now another thing I like about this chassis is it's extra support in the middle because a lot of times when you do this, your whole chassis will bow due to the pressure of the weight variances that are caused in the corner as opposed to being across the total. So with this, I've got this chassis pretty much ready to receive a motherboard. So the next thing you're going to see is that part of the process. So I will stop for now and I'll add the next section shortly. Okay, so now we have got this basic 1150 series motherboard which is the Z77 Alpha from Asus. 
And something I wanted to point out here real, really well, and it's a kind of a thing that Asus stopped doing, which I didn't agree with, but the design of this implementation is actually very friendly to the human hand. Um, the placement of the power output, the placement and turning of the eight cable output support makes the unit a lot easier to build and install. Now, the other factor about this is, of course, the availability of fan ports. Kind of a, a restricted kind of mindset that you can see here, which is okay to one degree, but not okay because we're used to usually seeing five of these, and here we only have three available, which is okay. It's still not a problem. We can work with that. But the key detail there is they really designed this motherboard um, for the Z77 in such a way so that its ease of access to getting into things is really cool. Uh, very easy to do, not hard on the hands, no scuffing or cutting of the hands, and you get pretty good availability. But I still recommend that you mount the motherboard pre-prep before we put the power supply in. So that's what we're going to do here today. We're going to pre-prep this, get these units in here correctly, and clean all this up. Make sure we have our connectivity good for our fans, and make sure that we're ready for the power supply eventually to be put in place. So this rig already worked fully, functionally. So I have no expectations to test it out a second time. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit and get it in place. Okay, so now we have the fans in place. We have a wire cleanup to make sure that our wires are not obstructing airflow. And wires do instruct, obstruct, sorry, airflow. So we want to make sure they're tight and out of the way. We don't want them to play any games with anything which they do all the time, but we want to make sure that they're out of the way and they're not going to be a nuisance to the overall process. So we also have over here some of the other wiring, which we're going to have to put in place. Specifically, the most difficult one is going to be the power hookup and LEDs and all of that, So, which is this guy right here. So by having that there, we'll go through the process of setting up that connectivity. And I'm going to actually use all the USB outputs this time. So that's going to be really cool too. I'll show you how that looks. I'll be next. Okay, so now we're fully utilizing all the USB outputs requirements to make it easier to work to the front of the chassis opposed to having to come back here to the back of the chassis where really all we're going to have is a network cable connection right there. That's it. Believe it or not, that's all we're going to have. We'll have a USB boot device drive, which is this little guy right here, and he will boot up the chassis. And that's his job. That's all he has to do. He boots up, comes up, gets operational, and he works. Now, I'm going to have to take this, these cards out, but I wanted to make sure that I had heat control under control. You know, this is not making contact. These wires are in the clear all the way through here, out the back, and they basically have a job, and that is don't touch the video card and do their jobs. So that's good news, and so now I'm ready to hook the power feeds up once I sort these connections out. And that will give me the ability of being able to get us to the next stage. So I will let you go and we'll get to the next stage. Okay, so now I've re relocated the chassis inside. I've got everything hooked up. Looks really clean, looks sharp, well cable controlled. No points of overheating. I have a little bit of concern over one connector, but the rest is pretty decent. And basically, in a nutshell, this one right here, but it's only powering fans now, so it's out of the picture. But I don't trust this guy. I don't like it. And I'm saying I might replace this power supply. But I got the fan inputs in. I got my movers running. I've got everything in place. So now it's time to post the BIOS and see if I can get it to come up. So hitting the fan, the uh, LED light indicator and uh, bringing it up. And we'll see if it comes up. There it is. Okay, that's good news. Does not have a boot drive yet, but it will shortly. So let's go ahead and power that down. And I'll put this guy in. He has a USB boot device. Okay, he's in. Everything else looks good. Got the HDMI, out, the HDMI outputs. So I'll start, turn this guy on now. Airflow is really good. I really like that. Hmm, don't like that necessarily, but I'll have to check into that, address that secondly. But while it's seeing it's here, we're going to see, see if it posts. I'm 
Okay, it's in a loop. Not sure why. Let me check that out. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've got everything tested. It turned out I had a problem with the power supply. So I flipped it over to a 750. Got everything reconnected up and it's running through a loop test now. Got good airflow coming out of the open port slots. I've got air, good auxiliary airflow coming out to keep the CPU and the PSU away from the heat thresholds of the video cards. And we are starting a diagnostic boot process. So believe it or not, this was the easy part. Yep, I said it, the easy part. The bad news is I gotta put it down there. <laughs> so, with that being said, half the effort is done now. We've got the Rig 3 moved into a true housing for a 4 year footprint. Lots of airflow, lots of function. It can go up to four GPUs. Don't worry, I'm not really a big fan of having gazillions of GPUs. I'm more th uh, thinking more along the premises of being smarter about it. Because you can kill yourself doing one thing by having a lot of other things. But if you're a little smarter in your approach, you'll find you can do a lot more. Okay, so we are now installed. Both miners are in place. My bench is free. I'm operational. And yes, Nate and Tyler, there they are. Getting back into the coding process for the coprocessor stack. And uh, I can only do one at a time, but I'm finally able to start working on that information and that setup. So, good news, right? Alright guys, I'm signing off. God bless. If you like, like. If you don't, so what? You're good to go anyways. I'll let you go. Take care.